she's tired. She's finally out of kindergarten. I've graduated from she's kindergarten. Graduated. And so they had a party this morning. And it's like, oh. Now she's just getting started with the kids. Isn't that awesome? So we're going to intrigue. Yeah. God is good. All, All the time. time. The, the, how she does it, and so we're going to get started, and then take notes, all right? Now, we did order the books, the healing books, so that should oh. be in by next week. Yes. So anybody that would like to get those, that would be awesome, okay? So would you, are you there? <laughs> are you back there? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, would you read this, please? And I'm going to have you read it right out of the Amplified, okay. starting Ephesians chapter 1, 17 through 23. Could this type be any smaller? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Careful what you ask for. You're going to go back to your teepee? That's then. right. <laughs> Woo. All right. Praise the Lord. I can see this. Thank you, Jesus. All right. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you the spirit of wisdom yes, and Daddy. revelation of insight into the mysteries and the secrets in the deep and the intimate knowledge of him. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you, and how rich is his glory in inheritance in the saints, his set-apart ones. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion in every name that is named above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are here to come. And he put all things under his feet that has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercise throughout the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all, for in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. Now, Father God, I thank you that each one of us, our ears are open, our hearts are open. The wisdom of God is flowing within us, and we get that revelation knowledge of what Nancy is saying because she's speaking the word of God and the word of God is the only place we should be learning from you, Father. And we thank you. And we love speakers that are going only through the word. And we give you the glory and the honor. So with D and I, speak through our vocal cords and think through our minds. Help us that we will be your representatives in Jesus' name. Do you agree? Amen. Now, one, one thing i got to say, 3 John 2. What does 3 John 2 say? Does anybody know? I know you've all got this. I know. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way. This is the Amplified Classic. Do you have it, Debbie? No. Okay. So that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. So we know 100% that the word of God, when we use the word of God, we will have total success. Amen. All right? That's where I'm looking at. So we want to put our faith out there. But how do you know what to do unless you get the word? And you get God's wisdom, and you learn the Word, and then you got to learn what to do with the Word of God and how mm -hmm. to apply the Word of God. And that's where a lot of people miss it because, 
Oh, you know, God can do whatever he wants. Can he? No, no, because he set himself in agreement because we have a covenant with him. And he set us in Ephesians 2, 6 in heavenly places with himself. Yep. And so he said, I want you to rule and reign with me because he is the head of the time and the season. What has he given us the head of? Keeping the enemy under our feet. Okay, and he wants us to speak to the mountain. He wants us to call those things that be not as though they were. He wants us to ask and you shall receive. Knock and you will find. So he wants us to seek out his word. And it's so simple when we pray in the spirit and ask for that revelation, ask for him to show us. And he will show us. And that's what we're going to get tonight. I think it's really exciting. Would you bring it up, please, Lynn? Bless you. Okay. Don't make it too dark. They got notes here. So can you turn Welcome up the lights just a little? Today. We are so thrilled to have you with us. Thank you for coming on in. Bring your Bible with you, but as important, bring your faith with you. Amen. Bring your expectation, and we're students here together, learning the word, and I've got a studio audience. We're hungry. In the word today. Amen. Um, today I want to start a new series, and we're going to talk about um, how to cooperate with God in such a way that we always receive. God doesn't intend that when we pray or when we release our faith that we only have hit and miss results. That's right. Amen. We should receive every single time. And if I could say this, don't be okay when you release your faith or when you pray and you don't get the result you're after. Right. If we don't receive, it's not because the word doesn't work. That's it's right. not because faith doesn't work. It's because we have a further opportunity to learn what God's word says, because when, when the word gets our faith, our cooperation, when we join our part with God's part, we always receive. Oh, always receive. I always receive my healing. Amen. I always receive my need met. I always receive my prayers answered. That's what you need to say. That's what you need to expect. That's what you need to believe. And when we don't settle for less than always, God will lead us into the truth so that we always receive. Amen. So let's not be okay with the hit and miss results. Amen. Always. God never intends that his people pray and not receive. He never intends that. He never intends that we release our faith for a financial need and we not receive it. He never intends that that happen. He never intends that we, uh, we look to him for healing and we, we don't, uh, if I could say this, have the knowledge we need. Yeah. Always receiving. Always receiving. That's us. That's you. Amen. Let's not settle for anything less. Um, you know, it, we can't treat the word like we treated school. <laughs> I don't know about you. I was okay. I was all. I was okay if I got a B, if I got a C, at least I, at least I was still in school, yeah. right? Just as long as I stayed there. Now there are some people that always had to receive a hundred. Now that was not my mentality. That might have been others' mentality. Anybody in here was that? I, yeah, that way. That way. Anybody else over on this side? No. No, see, we were okay with not always yes, right. receiving 100 on a score, right? Right? You just wanted to get to the next grade, right? You just wanted to not get in trouble when you got home, right? Uh, so we were okay with a good measure of success. <laughs> but God doesn't just want us to have a good measure of success. He wants us to have total success. Amen. So that means we're now resetting our thinking and our expectation that we're not the student of yesteryear that was okay with partial results. We want total, uh, total results with everything that we set our faith on and everything that God's Word offers us. Amen. 
So we're upping our expectation in our own life, right? Always receiving. Always receiving. So let's talk about what has to happen for us to always receive. Well, first of all, we have to gain knowledge of the Word. We have to know the will of God because you can't have faith for something you don't know is available to you. You can't, we can't have faith for something that we don't know that God has already made ours, right? Dad Hagen used to say it to us because Dad Hagen was our spiritual father for decades, and he used to say, uh, to have faith, the will of God must be known. You can't have faith where the will of God isn't known. Yeah. But when you, when you know the will of God, you can have faith for that. So we have to, what's it mean by the will of God? Something he wants for us. How many of you know tragedy, heartbreak, accidents, failure has nothing to do with the will of God. God never willed that. He never planned it for anyone. And none of that, no, no tragedy, no heartbreak, no difficulty comes from God, right. for the Lord is good, yes. and His mercy endures forever. God never has any, anything in His goodness cannot produce anything negative. Yes. That's right. His goodness can only produce what is good and what is right. If it's not good, it didn't come from God. That's, right. That's just easy, simple doctrine right there. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus said this, that He said the enemy comes to steal, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life. Anything that steals, kills, and destroys. And I so appreciate something that Brother Copeland says about it because notice the order, steal, uh-huh. kill, destroy. Uh-huh. And uh, he, Brother Copeland makes this statement. The first thing, and the primary thing the devil's stealing is the word out of our heart. Oh, yeah. Because if he can steal the word out of our heart, he can kill and he can destroy. Wow. But if he can't steal the word out of our heart, he can't progress into killing and, 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 and destroying. So Jesus made it clear in John 10.10, 10, anything that steals, kills, and destroys, God had nothing to do with. But anything that has life connected to it, that's God. Anything that has something good. You know, life produces. It produces something. And so when we are in the will of God, on the word of God, um, we're going to produce the right things, and the right thing will be produced in our life. When we say the Word of God, we can also think the phrase, the will of God. His Word and His will are one. They're the same thing. If you say, this is the Word of God, then it's the will of God. Amen. So we want, we have to, to always receive We must know God's will. Where do we learn God's will? How do we learn God's will? One place, the Word, the Word of God. We always go to the Word to find out how God thinks. We don't go to how just what we've heard through the years, what we've been taught. We always have to line up everything with the Word. I don't care if it's our favorite preacher that preached it. If it's not in the Word, it's not the will of God. So we always let the word be the final authority because that's the only way we'll know his will. We can't know God by feelings. We can't know God just by impressions. (laughs) One of my sons, they were watching a... um, Oh, on television, they would watch a show. I don't know, something about they're digging for gold. (laughs) Anybody ever seen those? They were digging for gold. And so um, he was over at my house watching this years ago. And, you know, they, they do certain tests to kind of test the soil to see if there's any gold in it. And one, <laughs> one, I'll get it out and hang on. <laughs> because it's become a family joke. That's why I say it. there's one guy who said, because the, the, the soil test showed there's no gold here. But this one guy, he said, I feel like there's gold here. <laughs> and we go, I got, and he said, I got a feeling that there's gold here. Where well, they dug there, and the feeling was wrong. <laughs> there was no gold there. And that's why we, so many people live by, I got a feeling. 
you start digging there with that feeling and you're going to come up sad and disappointed because feelings are not the source of life. <laughs> They're not the source of answer for it. But sometimes my, my son and I say, I got a feeling. You know? <laughs> but anyway, we need to go on to bigger and better things. But, <laughs> but we can't know God by feeling. Right. 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 Yep. And so many times people base how they believe God operates based on how they feel about something uh-huh. or what somebody told them about God. Yeah. But we don't have to guess and be wrong. We can go to the Word and find out firsthand. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You can read a biography on someone or you can read the autobiography right. on someone. Yeah. The biography is what somebody, an author, wrote about someone else's life. But an autobiography is what the person wrote himself about his life. God, the word is an autobiography. Yeah. It's not just a biography of what somebody observed or what somebody thought. Yeah. These men of old wrote as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. So that way we have accurate results. We have accurate information. We, gain, we can gain accurate knowledge. Amen of the will of God. And so let's lay aside the biography definition of what we were told or taught maybe by somebody else if it's not in agreement with the word itself. Amen. Amen. So faith is not just knowing the will of God. It begins there. We, you can't have faith till you know the will of God. But once we know the will of God, we also have to discover the ways of God. The will of God is what is his what he's made ours. The ways of God is how we cooperate with what he's made ours. We have to if he uh, we know it's the will of God for every man to be saved, but we have to learn what's the way of being saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, growing up, <clears throat> we had the thought, I was raised in a denominational church, precious people, but we didn't always know the will of God, and we didn't know the ways of God. Um, we had the idea that if I go to church, I'm a Christian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Now, it's the will of God that every man become a child of God, yeah, sure is. that they make that choice. So we had the idea, if I go to church, that's how I become a Christian. But that's not the ways of God. Right. That's the ways of man's thinking, yeah, but that's yeah. not the ways of God. There are certain steps that have to be taken. Mm-hmm. Basically, in your heart, you have to, you have to open, it, open your heart up to receive him. Yes. And that can be done in, in, it doesn't have to have particular words. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. For example, the, the word says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, see, we thought that just showing up for church made us saved, right. but it doesn't. We thought that if we believed God existed, that made us a Christian. That's really what I grew up thinking. Then I found out, wait a minute, you have to call on the name of the Lord. There has to be an opening of your heart to receive him in. See, those are ways to receive what he has willed. He has willed that he, he, he abide and live in the heart of every man, but there's a way that he has an entrance and we have to open the door. That's the way. You understand? So the will of God has to be known, but the ways of how his will is carried out it has to be known. If we will know the will and the ways, we get results every time. If we only know the will, but we don't know the ways, we won't receive. You understand that? Um, I love how Sister Gloria Copeland, you've heard her testimony probably, she didn't say where it says, Who, uh, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't even have to be those exact words because Sister Gloria said, Jesus, take my life and do something with it. How precious. What is that? That is a heart that's open. That's all he needs, an open heart. And however the words express that open heart, there's no lo- hard legal hard, fast rule, just so long as your heart is open. Yes. And, you, and you say, I want him in my heart, however the wording. Another preacher heard, heard uh, Billy Graham give the salvation, the altar call, in a crusade on television. This man was watching before he was saved. He was watching. He ended up becoming a preacher, but as an unsaved young man, he heard Billy Graham pray the salvation prayer, and he didn't capture it all. 
So he just said, God, whatever Billy Graham said. <laughs> and he got born again. Why? He opened his heart. That's the important thing. I, I love the, the testimony of one man. He came down to the altar to get saved. And they said, you know, those in the community said he was, a, he was the worst guy in town. I mean, if anybody's going to do it, this guy was going to do it. You know, everybody knew he had a reputation of being the roughest guy in town. So he heard the preacher preach, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this man had come to the service, the, the worst guy in town, you yeah. know, and it came across, and when the preacher opened up the altar for people to come down and get born again, the man went down to the altar and said, Jesus, 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 and then got up and walked back. And the preacher thought, well, my goodness, he didn't get anything. He wasn't down there long enough to get something. You know, they thought because he's lived bad, he's lived hard, he's going to have to be down there a long time. <laughs> That's what they thought. So uh, the preacher goes back to him and says, you just went to the altar and said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Then you got up and came and sat back down. He said, you probably need to come back down and ask Jesus to come in your heart and be a Savior. He said, well, preacher, I just did what you said. You said, whosoever shall call on the name yeah. of the Lord yeah. shall be yeah. saved. And the preacher said, come to find out, I didn't believe my own preaching. <laughs> <laughs> but see, the man took it literally. Uh -huh. Whosoever shall call, and that's an exact that's way to right. apply it. Right. Whosoever shall call on the name. Yeah. And that's what he did. He said, I called three times. Didn't you hear me? <laughs> that's what the man told the preacher. I called three times. Is that not enough? Yeah. Well, it is enough. Yeah. One time's enough. Yeah. You know, so it's the will of God that we be born again, but we need to know we have an action to take just because we can know, okay, it's the will of God I go to heaven. It's the will of God that Jesus become my Lord, but if you don't cooperate, you won't receive the will. Yes. If you don't put a way in place, Amen. if you don't call, if you don't open your heart, you won't be saved just because you know it's his will to be saved. You have to cooperate and take your, your part Take your steps. It's the same thing with healing. Yes. You can know it's the will of God to be healed, but you have to know the ways of God He heals. Yes. 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 It's the same thing with prosperity. You can know it's the will of God that you prosper, but if you don't learn the ways of prosperity, yes. people can know, oh, God wants me to prosper. Yeah, but there are ways to receive of that prosperity. So if you, we have to know to get results every time, we have to not only know the will of God, we have to know the ways of God. Amen. Amen. So in his word, it shows his will, but his word also shows his ways. When you're feeding on the word, it would benefit you to start paying attention this is a will of God in this scripture, and this next scripture is the way of God. Don't learn to identify as you're reading through the Word. This scripture shows me His will, but this scripture shows me His way. That's called gaining skill. Right. Go with me to Psalms chapter. Let's look at Psalm chapter 103. In verse 7, we're going to see something in connection with this. Uh, <clears throat> Psalm 103, verse 7. It says, he, talking about God, God made known his ways unto Moses, mm -hmm. his acts unto the children of Israel. Now look at this. So the Israelites knew the acts of God, but Moses knew the ways of God. Uh, let's, let's put it this way, an example. Um, I appreciate fine art. I, uh, I am so enthralled with artists that have taken this skill and honed it. And it's, to me, it's just a delight to see good art. Um, if an artist presented you with a painting that he had done, you would see his acts. That's his act, yes. mm -hmm. right? Yes. That's something he produced with his skill. Yeah. Right. And you could, uh, you could uh, value that piece of art. You could appreciate that piece of art. 
But if you're highly interested, you would go, I would love to see how you did that. And he could say, come to my studio and I'll show you my ways. Then you go and you see how he prepares the canvas or even how he chooses his canvas, how he mounts the canvas. Um, The... The materials he uses, is he using oil? Is he using pastels? Is he using watercolor? Is he using pen and ink? Is he using pencil? These are different uh, instruments he can use to produce his ways. Oh, that's good. That's good. And then you watch him take those strokes. You watch him maybe prepare the whole background, and some might just do a light wash over the whole background. And it's amazing when you see, I don't know if you've ever watched online or in person, watched an artist's work, but you go, I'd have never thought that they started doing that to arrive at what they arrived at. But they'll sometimes, you can see them, they'll do a, a black across the whole background, and then they start working and bring it up to the light. Or sometimes they start with the light colors and take it to the dark, depending on the style or the subject. But it's amazing to watch them, how they arrive at the end result. They have all these ways they incorporate. So this is what this verse to me, when we read it in one, Psalm 103, verse 7, God made known his ways to Moses, but his acts unto the children of Israel. They saw the final result. The, the children of Israel saw the act played out, but Moses knew the mind of God. Oh the steps of God, the ways that God moved to produce that act. Now, which do you think would be really more important to a life of skill, just to see the act or to know the ways? The ways. God has provided his will, and also we've seen record of his acts, right? Right? but he also shows us his ways because he wants us to know him. Yes. He wants us to know the steps he took. Mm-hmm. We, we want, he wants us to know how he operates his faith because we have his faith. Mm-hmm. So if we learn the ways he operates his faith, since we have the same faith, if we'll operate those same ways, we'll get the exact results he gets. Oh, wow. The will and the ways yeah, of God. Now, let's go to Psalm chapter 95. Psalm chapter 95, and I'm going to read out the Amplified Classic translation on this passage. Psalm 95, verse 10. It reads, um, and this is talking about, again, the Hebrews that God delivered out of Egypt. And this is God speaking. He said, 40 Years long was I grieved and disgusted with that generation. Why? Remember, for 40 years they wandered in the wilderness. Why? They refused to move with him. They refused to move into the land that he made theirs. So God said, 40 years long was I grieved and disgusted with that generation. And I said, so God declared this, it is a people that do err in their hearts. So if we don't move with God, it's a heart issue. Something in our heart is not in agreement with God. So God said it is is a people that do err in their hearts, and they do not approve, acknowledge, and regard my ways. So if we don't know his ways, our heart can get off. Mm. Mm-hmm. We start adopting our own ways, yeah. yes. and we go off course. Yeah. He said, wherefore, I swore in my wrath that they would not enter my rest, which was at the land of promise that he gave them. Mm-hmm. It wasn't him keeping them out. It was them not interested enough mm-hmm. to know his ways to go in. Yes. Wow. They were willing to go in if God was just going to do, do it all for them. Right. But that's not the ways of God. Right. God needs man's agreement because he will never force himself upon anyone. Someone has to be hungry enough, interested enough in the ways of God to say, I want to learn them. Yeah. Um, If an artist took one of his fine paintings and handed it to two different people, one person just said, oh, thank you, that's very nice, and they walk out. 
but the other one marvels over it. Yes. They study it. They um, admire it deeply. They appreciate it. And then they say, can I come and see more of what you've done? Which one do you think that artist would be more inclined to invite into his studio? The one who just said thank you and, and walks out or the one who says, I appreciate this. I am interested in this. To know God's ways, you have to be interested. It's not enough that we appreciate God. We have to, if I could say this, value what God has made ours enough to study and learn the way he thinks, the way he moves, what pleases him, what displeases him. How does he get results? I want to know that. Why? Because I, I'm, I'm interested. Mm-hmm. And I, I love him enough to show him my honor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. To be interested in the ways of God is a flow of honor. Oh, that's good. Yes, that's, that's good. good. That's good. It's an honor issue. And those God, God says, those who honor me, I will honor. Yes. When we show God, I honor you enough that I want to learn you. I want to learn how... Uh, how you, how you move. I want, to, I want to become skillful. I want to learn that faith you put in me. I want to learn how healing power is received. I want to learn what grieves you so that I stay away from it. I don't want to play with anything. I don't want to get near. I don't want to get my toes up to the edge of what displeases you. I'm going to stay as far back from that line as I can because I'm, I honor you. Amen. 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 When we show God we honor him, he will honor us by unveiling his ways to us. The spirit of God will give us revelation that those who aren't really interested will never receive the revelation because they're not interested enough to honor it. But when you're interested enough to honor it, he'll reveal it to us to know his will and his ways. You don't want to miss upcoming episodes. We've just introduced this, but it's going to be good because the Word is always good. Amen. Join us next time. And until next time, remember this. Jesus is the healer. God bless you. Amen. Wasn't that delicious? To watch or listen to Now, you have to get into the Word to get understanding, right? Yes. Now, if I told you, and here I knocked it on the floor, but I was looking for my fennel. Why? What does fennel do in the body? Do me a favor. And I'm doing this for a purpose. Look it up on your phone right now. What does fennel do in the body? Now, if nobody has a phone to do it, I'll do it. Okay? I think Carrie's got it on the ball. Got it? Of course. Okay. (laughs) What does fennel? Fennel is, is an oil. But now you don't, some of you know what fennel does in the body, but some do not. Right? Right. But you can see it, and you can smell it. To me, it tastes like black licorice. Mm-hmm. Okay, but what does it do in the body? This is, we open the Word of God like we open our hearts, but now we got to know what to do with it. Because if we don't, we don't look forward to the results. Would you please? It relieves occasional indigestion and digestive tr- troubles. It eases monthly menstrual cycles supports a healthy lymphatic system, calms minor skin irritation, and helps soothe teeth and gums. Hmm. Read it once more. Relieves occasional indigestion and digestive troubles, eases monthly menstrual cycles, supports a healthy lymphatic system, calms minor skin irritation, and helps soothe teeth and gums. Do you know these oils are in the Bible and we're to use those for healing? You realize that? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we don't know what's in that Bible until we dig for them, just like she was talking about their sons used to watch us digging for gold. But now that you know it, okay, like, like if you need something for digestion, I love the smell of it, okay? It reminds me of the hyssop plant. And I like to take those little flowers and chew on them. But now that you know it, now you have an interest in it, don't you? Mm -hmm. But you don't know what it smells like, do you? 
right? I don't want anybody to take anything because I don't want your hands on it, but would you take them, just let them take this scent, just smell it, but please don't touch it because it's my personal, just give people, now you're going to know how to smell it. Right? <laughs> you know. Stay, it tastes like licorice to me. It smells like licorice. Yeah. Now, some people may repel it. You know. But I like it. My body is drawn to it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the word. Once you open it, and you know what to do with it, and you even smell it. Now the word of God, we open the word, and now we find out how to get born again, right? But we then what do we have to do? We have to learn how to apply it. So how would I apply this? This is what I like to do. And on my tongue. And it's wonderful if you've got any problems in your mouth or um, whatever so that you don't get gingivitis and different things like that. I don't have that. But sometimes it'll just come to my heart that I want that. See, God will release his word to us, and what it looks like, what it smells like, you can even look up what the plant looks like. And then you start to use it, and you go, skin rashes, lymphatic. Oh, wow, this is some good stuff. But God has released this all in his word. Now, has he released healing in his word? Yes, he has. Yeah. But do we know how to apply it? How do we apply it? And there, there's several w ways to apply healing. And we're not going to do that tonight. But we're just getting our feet wet so that we learn to take the word and read it, meditate on it, and then apply it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we get lazy. I, I do. But then the next time, I'll look it up because I, I have a book that tells me about it, and I'll look and I'll go, ooh, and then, oh, I like that. You see what I'm saying? So now, let's go, and what, you've taken notes, I'm sure, but what really stood out to you? Okay, and if it's okay, we'll just start with the party girl here. That would be me. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Retired party girl. Yes, what's the The party's out? just starting. <laughs> Was that right to say? Retired party girl? Oh. <laughs> See where her mind is? See where her mind Didn't you hear me It was say a that beautiful, a nice coffee and brunch today. That's retirement all it was. party. Oh, oh, the and I'm not a party we... girl. I'm a kindergarten teacher, which is kind of a party girl. Because <laughs> we had a party every day. I love to. I love to have a good party. Yes. <laughs> well, you made me lose my train of thought here. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the things that I, I liked right off the bat was the fact that she said, "Don't be okay with re without that you don't receive from God. Right. We should receive it every time, always." And we get in the head like, "Oh, maybe it will. Maybe no. If we cannot." Have faith for a miracle, we will never get our miracle. Mm -hmm. That was right. my first thing. Good. Okay. Donna? Yeah. Get it right up mm -hmm. there like you're eating it. God yeah. wants us to have total success in everything he offers us. Yes. Hey, tell me, well, let's not just let these things go by, but how do we get total success? By knowing his will and his ways and then acting on them. So now we're going to have to get our nose in that Bible and we're mm -hmm. going to have to find the scriptures, which he's already given us scriptures. Now the other thing, this is awesome. Now this is not just for healing, but how about prosperity in your life? How about if if your your children or somebody around you becomes ill, will you be able to supply that healing for them, knowing what to say? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah? Well, she started out with it, and so I picked up on it, and she said, I always, always, always receive that I cooperate with the word, with God, with God and his word. Always. And so, wow, that is, that's pretty heavy. So I, okay, I bring about this, and I said, well, we pray about 
about it, you're going to say the word that that term void will produce something. Say it in this word. You say, I believe that I will receive it. Yes. Always. Yes. So you're, you're mulling this over. You're murmuring. Is that the way to say it? Muttering? Murmuring. And what are you doing? You're this belongs to me. This belongs to me. I'm going to pray, and this belongs to me. And I know it's finished, so you're going to speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Isn't that what we do? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay. I thought, I thought you had a little bit more to say. So how do we cooperate with God? How do we cooperate with God? We always we, receive. Yes. We always receive, right? We got the tickles in here tonight, don't we? <laughs> so remember, God does not intend for us that when we pray, not to have it. He wants us to have what we pray for. But what do we do sometimes? We take a prayer, throw it against the wall, and hope it sticks. And then when it doesn't, we'll say, well, it wasn't God's will. And then we blame it on to God. Why didn't God heal me? Why didn't? No, 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 no. It's, it's not on his end, it's on our end. We have yeah. to take accountability. Yeah, and so you start speaking to stuff. Mm -hmm. And start speaking it immediately. Amen. Instead of mulling over it or murmuring about my problem or what's going on or how I feel. Or, feel. or you know, what's going on in my body or something in a relationship. Answer it Amen. immediately with God's word and a scripture to follow it up. And then you'll have a success, and you'll go, I got it. I got it. And then you'll start saying, I just have to believe it. So I'm going to pray, and what I pray, I know I've got it. Yes. I've already got it. So you're going to speak to yourself again. Songs and hymns and spiritual songs, right? Mm -hmm. And if you missed it, remember, God doesn't miss it. No, we miss it, so then we got to go back over it again. Debbie? We can't know God by feeling. Or secondhand information. Mm -hmm. That's what I think's got our church, the church, not us, but the church in a lot of trouble because they're not looking into the word and they're people are like, Well, isn't that what it says? Well, where? Where does it say that? It's a fallacy and they have to go back to the truth. You know, and that leaves a good question. And I was thinking about this earlier this morning. And this fits in really good. The church that I was raised in, they never had any healing. They never prayed for good things to happen. You are right? They didn't even say nothing. You went them for help? I don't know. I don't know. They didn't even tell you to pray. Right? Yeah. And so it's still the same today in many of them. But we can't go by feelings. And when you're raised up, that's what happens when you're raised up with lies. Keisha. I like when she said, um, James heal by knowing his way and his, his will and his way. And then she used the analogy of she was raised up in a church that she, you could know God. You went to, and you believed that going to church was the way that you got saved, but until she really knew the scripture that says you need to say G confess Jesus as your yeah. Lord and Savior, that really knowing the word was really the will of God, not just what a religion tells you, mm -hmm. and then knowing the way by speaking it, not just thinking it, but you have to speak it out. So I like how she just goes through it methodically and this is what you're going to use for everything that you want to receive mm -hmm. in salvation. Right. It's the same way. Right. I, can I, I'll interject this. You know, when my mom, you know, came to my house and wanted what I had, she started questioning things. And she said, we were never taught that, Janet. I said, I know. And I said, do you believe it now? Well, it's written down in there. But see, she was born again. That's why she was able to receive it. If she was not born again, she wouldn't have been able to receive it. You can receive that you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but when you're getting into revelation, then you've got to be born again. So people will say, I'm a Christian. 
really, do you go to church? No, no. You're not a Christian. What do you mean? I can be a Christian and not go to church. Can you really think on that? Start using common sense like Paul said and think on that. Anybody have anything to say on that? So, go ahead. Well, this is just me saying it, and I may be totally wrong. That's but okay. the first step is you need to have an open heart to Jesus. Yes. Whether you're in the church or not in the church or wherever you're at, that open heart is going to be the start of it all. Now, mm -hmm. are there things to know the ways and gain skill in the Word of God? Yes, but I think it all starts with just having that open heart. Yeah, because what will happen, and this was on Greg Moore's, for instance, introduction to the Bible, and that was when you ask Jesus into your heart, it's written on your heart, mm -hmm. and he's, he has a drawing. And so that drawing will draw you into the church, and that's what happened with me. And you become dissatisfied, like Nancy Dufresne, she became sent dissatisfied because of what she was taught. Wonderful people, but do you see the difference there? So God puts a drawing on us to come into the body to get fed and nourished. Now the person that doesn't go, did they really get born again? And I agree with Greg Moore. Are they going to go for a while and then just drop? If you don't, and and you know, people say, well, you got to make sure you disciple people and you got to stay at them. Nobody went after me. I went to a Christian woman's. I signed a paper because I wanted somebody to contact me. They never contacted me. But I went looking for something. And when I got someplace to a Lutheran Bible study, it just didn't answer the questions. So I found something else. So until I found Ed and Jan Carlstrom. So that was for many years that I didn't quit. But see, the drawing of the Holy Spirit draws us onto him. And we're going to want to be with people of like mind. Mm -hmm. Okay? Unless you get distracted by other things. Well, then... then because then, Yeah, I agree with you, because there, there's a drawing, mm -hmm. but then there's people that get distracted, and it, it kind of brings Squelches. that fire out. Mm -hmm. it, you know what I mean? But then were they really the born, devil's stealing. Were they really word. born again? That's what Greg came back with. Are mm -hmm. they really born again? Mm -hmm. Because once that gets a hold of you, yeah. you know something happened, mm -hmm. and it just keeps on, and you're just never you're right. satisfied until you find some. Just talk louder for the okay. tape. I'll expand on that, too, for um, some of my friends that were born Christian and then they've gotten away from it when I am with them for the day for our kids having a play date her husband can notice that she is calmer she is more likable and she's not as quick to react at her kids right. and so it's some of that um, like aroma like you would say that's kind of coming off and the other thing I'll equate it to is when we are going through all of the, the flu stuff going on, right? We want to be with people of like minds. And so being around church people, it was easy um, because you all didn't always have to worry about, you know, touching on someone's toes or how am I going to have to act at this place or what am I going to have to wear or not wear at this place? You know, like you knew when you were around your born again people and, and your church family, you were comfortable. You know, and again, you've got to know, you've got to cooperate with the Holy Spirit because we can deaden that. But are we going to are we going to go to heaven over that? I don't think so. I don't think so because you never got planted. You never allowed it to get planted in you. And going into more of what Benny Hinn is talking about is, we have a choice to plug in, plug in. And God will also, a young Christian, he will give them that discernment, this isn't right. This, 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 what they're telling isn't right. When I was going to that Lutheran Bible study, all women, and this Lutheran pastor, I was just like, it just wasn't right. But I couldn't put my finger on it, but I was 
hungry. All right? And look at me today. So why, why would a person let the devil steal the word from their heart? Because was it ever really planted there? Or was it a feeling? You know, I can hear Greg Moore saying that again. Feeling. But when it gets planted in there, you go and you look for people. And even when you're out someplace, you'll just gravitate to people. I know that with the Associated Builders and Contractors, when I would be around people in certain ones, you could just tell they were born again. And you gravitated to them. So how many people pray the prayer, but then don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide them? But does the flesh, the self-centeredness come in? Or somebody says something, and you say, well, I don't think I'll, well. Then were they ever really born again? I didn't care what my family said or thought. But I had a family member that did, and they went back to the family. Are they born again? They have no fruit that I can see. Now that's sad. You see, do you understand? This is a fine line, isn't it? But that's why when somebody's around and you say, were you ever born again? Yes, when? You know, you, you got to stir that up. you got to stir that up. And that's what's coming with this third awakening. We got to help stir people up because it's it'll sit dormant for that's that that on rocky soil, mm -hmm. and then it'll die off. But they are the one you you running after them are not going to they're not going to do it because you're running after them. They're going to do it because they're that drawing they've asked you and it's drawing on them. Okay, and then also the thing that um, the self-centeredness for I, I'm, I'm born again, but I want to do my will. I want to do what the world is doing. I want to sleep around. I want to live with this boy or this girl. I want to, I want to. What did they do with God? Did they, yeah, so did they lose their salvation? Yeah. Could be. We can't judge that. But that's very scary, and that's what Benny Hinn was saying. That's very scary. But the awesome thing about it is we can give them to the Lord, and we can pray. And when God gives you the opportunity, then talk to them. You know? Now, if, if they're not willing to talk about it, just pray in the Spirit, give them to the Lord, and you know that he's talking to them. You see, it's a sensitive situation, isn't it? But you don't pick up their ways because it says, watch who you hang around, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can hang around with somebody before you know it. You're doing what they're doing. Well, you're talking dirty. You're laughing at mm -hmm. dirty stuff. You're, you know? Well, and she was saying in Psalms 95, 10, Did for those years, he loathed those generations, that those people that didn't pay attention. And those, the Israelites of that generation, knew his ways, knew his will, but refused to do it his way. They wanted him to do it their way. And that's what I think this book is all about. Yes. You know, well, why isn't it fine for me to live with my boyfriend? Right. What does it hurt anybody? What does it do? But it does hurt people around you. It hurts you. It hurts your heart. It hardens that heart. Right. It's a heart issue. Yeah. People who do not open themselves to God in that area, that's... Because there's little places that are hardened in your heart if you haven't yes. totally given it over to him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want him to be loathing or grieving because I can't offer that part of my heart to him. Right. And then that strife, that unforgiveness, um, that pride or sin, whatever it is, then you're no longer going to hear from him. You're not going to be able to discern what he's saying, the Holy Spirit, and that's going to... Grieve, I think, the Holy Spirit right there. Absolutely. Because they've hardened their heart mm -hmm. where they're not ready to listen. Because, you know, everybody's doing it, Judy. Everybody's messing with this one. They get into high school. 
it wasn't the first month this, this girl had 22 guys already. You know what I'm talking about. And I know the girl. And I'm thinking, oh, my, my, my. But, but that's what the world's doing, and they think it's all right. But the church is supposed to be teaching. But now when you give that person to the Lord, that person, now the Holy Spirit's going to go after them, not to hurt them, but to woo them on. That's what it's about, right? Look at how he wooed you on, Carrie, with putting Megan in your, in your ways. And you started going, you know, even though your folks didn't, well, at first they're like, you got to do this and you got, and then they realized that your life was changing. But who was changing your life? God was changing her life. That's what we got to look at. But now, is she going to slip back into her old lifestyle? I don't know what she all did. No. No, I'm not going to slip back into alcoholism and smoking. I'm not going to do it. Because I know better now. I don't care who I hang out with. I don't care, you know, go with your family or anybody else. I can go into a bar and I'm perfectly happy. But when my feet get in there, I take over. Just like last night at the meeting, we took over. I want to get where the sinners are and sit right in the middle of them. Because I know the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is leaving that fragrance off. And mm -hmm. now they're on my ground, says God. Amen. Does this help? Mm -hmm. Okay, so don't forget to pray for people because people are changing. They make mistakes. They listen to the world. Oh, everybody's doing it. No, no, I'm not. Akita Garth, I like that, the videos that Kim, you tell a little bit about Akita Garth, please. So Lakita Garth um, goes into saving herself for marriage, essentially, because just like you said, everybody's doing it. That is literally the first thing you hear when you walk into middle school at this point, not even high school. Hmm. So as middle school, it is, you're what, 15-ish? And it's 13, 14, 12? 12. 13, Twelve. Okay. 14. I'm thinking seventh grade. Twelve. But, Sixth okay. grade. Twelve. Sixth grade. There we go. That's where it's already starting to be put in, even before that. But like middle school is where actions start to take place. And so Lakita Garth is really, really good about no, no, no. Like those people are dumb. They will regret it in the future. And this is your true reward for waiting and for you know waiting for marriage and all the things and then she does talk about the risk the benefits and ultimately what god says mm -hmm. i was just learning the other day around the pool how many young guys what is it 11 12 13 they got girlfriends they got girlfriends what do you think is happening anybody have any idea my lightning fast mind went, uh-oh. Their moms take them to the movies, though. What? But drop them off Their moms unsupervised. take them to movies. But you know what? They do get alone sometimes, don't they? Oh. Yeah. So, so just think about that. It really depends with how they were raised and what's ingrained in them. Because I do truly think if they were raised willy-nilly, then they're going to go and do what they know. and But if they were raised strictly, they're going to say, no, this isn't right. Mom, please do this or do that. Do the other thing. Right. So when we teach our children, we start taking the Lakita Garth, we start taking the consequences of having intercourse. What if that sweet little chick, what if she's got a disease and you pick it up and now for the rest of your life you have that disease? What if she becomes pregnant? you got 18 years of hell. You're going to have to support that little girl and that baby. If it's not twins. <laughs> but they don't know the consequence, you guys. That's what we have to tell them, the consequences of their actions. Or the world will tell them, oh, don't worry about that. We can take care of that. Abortion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like that, and she gives, she swings it all the way over to the worst scenario, yes. but then she swings it to the, the best scenario. 
get a vision of what you want for marriage. And she got a vision of what she saw of her grandmother and grandfather. And her grandfather, even when her, his, um, her grand, grandmother had died, he would walk two miles each day to the grave site. Yeah. Because she, he wanted to talk to, um, to her. So he, she got a vision of that love. And he said that was the only person he had ever been with. Yeah. And he, she was like, I want you guys to start to get a vision of that. Now, she talked about the negative stuff to me. But I like that because she was like, you have to make a decision way when you're younger mm -hmm. that, and get a vision. Make a decision and get your end goal in mind that this yes. is what you want. And she was like, this is how it is in every scenario you're going to have in life. Get the end vision in mind. Do you want to have all these STDs or do you want that good life like you've seen someone that you know really love their spouse? Right. And it was just really good. I'm like, yeah, this is excellent. Mm -hmm. I, I watched this one short video and um, this, this guy and gal had relationships and they showed the hotel room. And when the gal left, she wrote on the, on the mirror, Welcome to the wonderful world of AIDS. <gasps> An ARC carrier. She carries that disease. Ooh. And she hates men, so she's going to get as many men. Yes. And I, when Daryl, my brother Daryl, uh, had to, with, with an ARC carrier. Yes. He got it. But that other guy didn't. But he spread the good news. But who cares? But we're not sharing this stuff, and we need to share it. That's just like when in a marriage, a man or a woman cheats on their spouse. No, no. We've got to stop, and we've got to use common sense and use the word of God and then teach our children. But remember, if your kids made mistakes, don't get down on them. Pray for them. Give them to the Lord and start teaching them. Got it? Mm -hmm. It's awesome. So it's a day at a time, right? Yeah. But anyway, yeah. we want to go on quickly. Any questions about that? Anything? No? So we'll go on. Didi, what did you get out of here? Well, we have examples. Like Moses knew the steps of God, how God was going to work in every situation. And the Israelites were not interested. Isn't that amazing? I thought that was terrific, too. Brenda. So this old saying came to my mind, where there's a will, there's a way. Mm. And I was just like, well, mm. that kind of applies a little bit to this, in that when we read the word, where we find his will, there's a way. So Amen. we need to be looking for his ways. That's great. Also. And it's, the other thing I noted was that it's a flow of honor to know the ways of God. We can't mm -hmm. have faith for something that we don't have knowledge of, the word and his ways. Yes. Wow. Boy, we can learn a lot from Egypt and the Exodus. We yeah. can learn a lot. But God has that for today. We're going through that same thing today. Yeah. It was light in Gosha. Everything was good in Gosha. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Judy. Yeah. Well, again, uh, Debbie brought this up. Feelings are not the source of life or answered prayer. Um, and then she said, it's a heart with issue if we don't move with God. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Really. And that's, oh, amen. Pastor Kenny? We pray. We, we know the scripture and we pray. We pray for results from what we know in the word of God. But we miss one thing. We don't search further what is the final result. Yeah. And that's, the, that's where we have to uh, dig into the word to find out what the way is to get the final results. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, mine goes off of what Dee said, is you have to expect those results. You can't just put it out there and, and you know, if it's God's will, like, don't do that, right? And um, unbelief is what came to my head, right? When you, it's the timing of it too is 
not maybe what you expect it to be because God does not have our same timing. Mm -hmm. But I thought of the whole you know example. Christine always gives those great testimonies, like when she threw what the rock into the water and the keys popped up or whatever it was. Yeah, the stick. Yeah, and you know every time I talk to her and she has a testimony in my head, I'm like, you always. I feel like you know you always get your prayers answered. You every single time right Amen. and that's just the the feeling i got from her the aroma i got from her um versus sometimes right i'll pray for something and then i kind of do put it out there like well we'll see if or when this comes and you know she's saying no don't do that you can definitely have what you say amen isn't that great mm -hmm. oh anything else to share i i think again going back to the honoring of god because that is, you know, he's going to unveil his revelation and we're going to know his will and his ways, but we have to honor him. And if God says, who honors me, I will honor you. And mm -hmm. I think that's being more grateful and, and I guess being a little bit more uh, intentional, like when he answers those prayers, sure, we're praising and worship after that. That right. praise and worship is a big, big piece. It is. Mm -hmm. You know, and I like that. And what is the word when we draw closer to him? He draws closer to us. Mm -hmm. Corban. Remember? Mm -hmm. Harry Stone talked about that. And you look at uh, Mr. Kerr. Mm -hmm. We can go back to those testimonies and bring our mind back. And the thing of it is, once you pray, the devil's not going to let go right away. But you just know. Remember Julianne? We gave that test to Julianne and Butch, and she got so mad, she took her Bible, and she went down that hall, and she kept on wheeling those, and it broke. I mean, that just didn't happen an hour. She kept going. Another time, uh, uh, Andrew Womack, he had a situation. He was so tired, but he got on his hands and knees and pushed that Bible with his nose and kept on. He would not lie down. He would not go to sleep because he won, and he did. So it's fighting the good fight. Mm -hmm. Once we take that prayer and we pray it and we say, pain, get off in Jesus' name, that pain has to obey the name of Jesus if you believe it, and mm -hmm. it's got to leave. It's got to leave, right? Mm -hmm that you might have to do it an hour from there again. But you keep on and you keep on. You don't give up. Okay, you know, this whole fall of mine, okay, I'm dealing with stuff, but I'm not going to give up. I'm just not going to give up. I just don't quit. But we can't quit. So anybody else? Oh, Donna? Oh, it went way down there. Oh. Yes, um, Kenny. <clears throat> we pray God's word, but I always come back to what Kenneth, our spiritual father, says. God's word is the final authority. Yes. Amen. The final authority. We all have different things that are authority in our life, but God's word is the final. Final yes. authority. It's a final authority. Listen, when somebody's talking, don't, don't do this because that's interrupting the Holy Spirit because they can hear that out there too, and we don't want to miss anything. But when you look at God's word is the final authority, and once we get that in our craw, we win. We yes. always win. I don't care if it takes a month. I don't care if it takes a year. You don't give up. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Donna? I was going to say, God's word and God's will are the same thing. And you have to line everything up in the word because it's his final authority. <laughs> yeah, final authority. God is good. All the time. All the time. He never quits, does he? No, he does no. not. Now, we're going to pass the bucket around. If anybody uh, wants to sow into this church, that's up to you. Um, but would you pass this around? Thank you. And um, if you don't want to, you don't have to, all right? When I'm working on something, when I need something, that's when I give an offering. I do. I give the offering because 
I've given the tithe already, but I'm going to jump in with that offering. Got it? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to. No. And if you don't pay tithe, please don't stand next to me. I, You know, <laughs> because you're on real thin ice and I don't want to be there. Because when we have got that insurance of rebuking the devourer, we would be foolish not to do it. Mm -hmm. We've got the best insurance in the whole world. Pastor Kenny, would you pray over it, please? Father, we come before you tonight, and we just thank you. We thank you for the opportunity that we can sow into your yes. uh, kingdom, Father. We just thank you for that opportunity, and it is a privilege for us, Father. And we just thank you and bless us for that. And, Father, we give all the glory and honor to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There, whatever you put in, remember, it's blessed. It's blessed, and what you guys put in Sundays, that gets blessed because I pray over that. I do, and pray scripture over that. I don't give up easy, right? Okay, now let's take communion because I think it's important. I know it's 11 minutes after, but um, we, won't, we won't die. Last night we got home a little bit later than I thought. What time was it? 10.30, but guess what? That was worth it. It was worth it. I wish everybody could have heard it. Right? Now, tomorrow morning, we are going to do causes. Now, what does causes mean? This means it's going to teach us so that we go into our life. It's more of a counseling book, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. And we're going we're gonna to do this thing, and we're going to love it. Because I learned, I've got, it, I've got it prepared for tomorrow. I got notes already. It's just exciting. So anyway, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Dee, would you like to do the communion tonight? Sure. Go ahead. Lord, we thank you for your body being broken for us, that we can be healed. We thank you for just remembering how much you love us every single day. We just take this and break it and feed this right now to our heart into our mind. Amen. Lord, we take this cup and we remember the blood that was shed for us, the blood that still calls out, the, the blood that cries out to you, but it's also that I, I pray that there's a covering of blood over each and every one of us here and anyone who listens to this, that they will have full salvation, healing, prosperity, everything you did for the atonement on the cross will be given to us right now in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, drink. Father. God is good. All the time. God is really good. Well, we bless each one of you as you go on your way. And we're going to continue to study God's word and keep it in simplicity so that you can go and share it with other people. Isn't that what it's about? Yes. yes. Going and sharing this with other people because... These are the days we want everybody to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen. I'm not going to play into people's games. I'm going to play in God's heavenly choir. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Father, I thank you in the precious name of Jesus. I thank you, as Dee said, the blood of Jesus is speaking, and that blood says we're healed, that blood says we're wealthy, that blood says we have peace, we have favor, we have joy in every area of our, of our lives and our families' lives. And, Father God, if there's any children, grandchildren, spiritual children, um, parents that have gone astray, we give them to you, and we thank you for taking them. And I give you the glory because now you're involved. And now, Father God, you chase after them, not to hurt them, but to draw them on to you. And I thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. It just looks like we're a little late, doesn't it? <laughs> just, just a, just a little.